Hello. Today I'm going to be looking at tarting up some of my old trees. I've got all these um, really old uh, railway modeler trees that I use for wargaming. I've had boxes full of these things. Uh, they're all very nice. I've had them for years and years. However, the problem is with these is I based them on plastic bases uh, a long time ago and that is makes them quite top heavy and easy to fall over. So what I wanted to do today is basically just add some washers to the bottom and I'm going to show you the process of doing that uh, so that they will hopefully stand up during games. So let's get started. As I say these ones are quite old so the first thing is the bottom may not be perfectly flat so I'm just going to give it a quick clean off with the file just to try to get it pretty uh, pretty flat and take any of the old excess paint and what have you off, off there and the old uh, plaster that I used. And next up I'm using these washers. These ones are I believe 30mm. Yeah these are 30mm washers. Uh, just your average everyday washer that you use for uh, putting screws in or any, any kind of DIY. Uh, you get these dead cheap off eBay. The bottom has been sealed up with a a small piece of uh, paper just to give it a little bit of a, an extra grip so I'm going to stick this now onto there if you check these are 20 mil there you actually see these are old um, games workshop bases uh, 20 mil size and if you put that on then the washer will actually just stand flush of the original base and what I'm going to do is later on I'm going to work that up with some uh, plaster of Paris or not plaster of Paris sorry some um, polyfiller then I'm taking my glue, this is Gorilla Super Glue, uh, there are different types out there. I was just using this as an experiment to see what it's like. It's quite a nice glue. Give it a good shake. Get it out onto your washer. Then literally put a small amount of glue onto the washer like that. Then take our tree, line it up as best you can. And press down on the glue. The instructions on the Gorilla Glue say to hold it for 30 to 45 seconds. Uh, different kinds of glue will have different bonding times. I think uh, Loctite is pretty quick. But there we have the washer now in place. So I'm just going to let that thoroughly dry while I get on with some more of these. So I've left the glue to dry uh, on these now, so these are all nicely solid. Uh, give them an hour or so. Uh, super glue usually takes a lot quicker than that to dry, but I thought I'd give them a little bit longer. As you can see, they're pretty solid now. They've got quite a lot of weight on the bottom, much more so than the plastic bases I used previously. Uh, you know, these are going to be able to be knocked about in a game and not get scattered everywhere easily. Uh, largely by the cat. So the next thing to do is to build up the base. This is a relatively easy thing to do. I'm using this stuff here which is Wilco Fast Working Quick Drying Interior Filler. You can use any type, there's polyfillers, there's uh, tetrian I think. Uh, anything that doesn't shrink. Uh, this is pre-mixed, you can also buy it as a powder and mix it yourself. Uh, I've, as you can see I've actually used this for quite a lot in other projects. But what I'm going to do is I've got a little flathead screwdriver uh, that I use this for this job. You can use any job for this. And what I want to do is really just fill up the space between the base and the washer to make it flush uh, like a little uh, rounded tuft underneath the, the tree itself. And very simply, I just literally 
add the filler in, try and get it as smooth as possible as well on that base. You can use your finger for this as well for smoothing off. I wouldn't worry too much about this because I'm actually going to fill, cover this in sand anyway once it's dry and and then we'll we'll put any more details and things on top of it so you're not actually going to see this filler once it's in once it's done and dry but this is just to give you that little line around the base so now you can see with the filler in place you've got a relatively rounded base on that tree covering that. So again I'm going to do this for every one of these That's the last one. So what I'll do now is I'm going to leave these to dry for uh, at least 24 hours, uh, and that will cure the uh, the polyfiller on the base, and then I can come back and start detailing it and painting it. So we've let these dry. Uh, I actually put these onto the radiator and it sped up the process somewhat, but I would recommend probably just leaving them for uh, for, for 24 hours at least. Uh, for the uh, for the plaster to actually set properly, these are dry enough for what I'm going to do next. The next product, uh, next next thing to do is add the sand for texture onto these bases. I mentioned it before, and what I've got for this is some PVA glue. This is just uh, basically wood glue. Get it anywhere. I use Wilco's because it's cheap and Wilco's is close. But there's plenty of different kinds. I will put some descriptions of this stuff in uh, links to some of this stuff in the uh, in the description, uh, so you can get it from a It's an old bottle, as you can see, covered in stuff. Uh, I've also got some clean water just to help the PVA flow a little bit when I'm painting it on. I'm using quite a big brush here. Uh, I don't know what size this is. It's so so mucky, but you know it's quite a quite a size to cover quite an area. And most importantly. Uh, this stuff, this is uh, silver sand, children's play sand, uh, very fine stuff, it's not like the builder's sand that you may, may see elsewhere. This is well worth seeking out because it's very good for basing and for other materials uh, when painting. So I've got my palette, I'm going to stick some a relatively big blob of PVA in there because I'm going to use quite a lot of this. I want to get my brush pretty wet and then just get that PVA nicely mixed up and then simply paint over your polyfiller like this. The problem with the polyfiller being white and the PVA being white is you can't actually see the two. There was, you can add some paint into the PVA as well just to so you can actually see what you've painted but you know you it's relatively easy to make sure you've covered everything and don't worry we're going to be painting all of this anyway so you won't see any white then we take the sand literally just dip your base of your tree in blow off any excess and there you go that's your uh, that's your first sanded tree base and then like before every single one has to be done it's always better to do these in a in kind of like a factory fashion. But this is not going to take very long.
that is the last one. Uh, so these will now, I'll stick these back on the radiator, or again, I would probably leave them another 24 hours to dry. These will actually take a little bit long, less to dry because the PVA is, is quite a fast drying glue. But I'm just going to stick these on the radiator, probably give it a couple of hours and then I can come back and actually finish it, well, paint, start painting the bases of these. So the PVA and the sand have now dried. <clears throat> Pretty sad living near close across the bases. I don't know if you can make that out or not, but it's all there, all dry. So <clears throat> the next thing to do now is to base paint the base coat uh, of the base, and I do this in a relatively old school way. Uh, I'm using here uh, Intermediate Green by Vallejo. It's their model colour. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description, like everything else. I put quite a bit of this out into my palette. Uh, again, I've got a largish brush. I'm going to just add a bit of water to this paint just again to thin it down to get because that's going to make painting the sand itself a lot easier than having it straight out of it uh, out of the tub. And the good thing about having a bit of water in is it actually spreads across the sand very quickly diffuses all the way across the sand there and I'm going to paint all the way up to the the trunks of the trees in this case because I'm going to give these a good cover and I want it all to fit in together now intermediate green may look a bit bright at this point but we are going to wash it and then also dry brush it in the next two stages so on its own it's a very bright green but it's actually a nice base for uh, <laughs> bases so that's the first one done I'll say very simple I will just work my way through all of these That is the basic painting. So, yet again, we leave that lot to dry. Uh, I wouldn't say too long because the sand will uh, dry the paint pretty quick anyway. And a couple of hours later, we can move on to the next stage. So, the next stage of painting these bases is now going to be the ink wash. So, the green is dry. Uh, I didn't say too long. Uh, what I use here is Vallejo's Flat Earth. This is one I've already made up and it's what it is. I've actually got an old tub of this uh, this paint and added water to it, clean water to it, to uh, turn it into a wash. I couldn't really tell you what the ratio is but it's quite a high water ratio to to the, the brown paint. Uh, one of my favourite paints is Flat Earth just because of its, its great name. Uh, but this, as I say, is very it's a thin version of the paint itself and I've made that up myself so we get that into our palette and if you look at when I paint it on the palette it's very 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 watery and that's the kind of consistency you're looking for here and then this is then simply daubed again over the top of the green paint so very much just like this this is going to then dull down that bright green of the intermediate green that we used. This is really the second stage of the weathering and I do this on all of my bases because it looks yeah, it's the same as my board. So <clears throat> pretty much covered like that. 
and that's the kind of consistency you want. So you still want some brown, but you want the green showing through a little bit. So same again, we go through every one of these. So that's it, that's those done. Uh, as you can see they're already starting to go back from the brown to the green as the, the brown dries uh, on some of these. Uh, I'm going to leave these to properly dry off and that will have dulled down the green enough and also give a bit of a patchy appearance to the undergrowth. And then the next thing is to dry brush them. So the third part of the painting is going to be a yellow highlight which will bring the green back out and also just uh, tie the, the actual bases together. I've got a um, Deco Art uh, paint. This is a, just a cheap paint I picked up somewhere. Any yellow will do. This one I think is sunburst yellow or so yeah, sun yellow. Just a yellow is fine. Uh, take off the top there. I've also got this Humboldt brush. This is a, a flat headed one. As you can see this is perfect for dry brushing so this will uh, would be very useful. And what I do is take a bit of paint on the end and wipe off as much as possible onto a piece of towel so you just get an impression of yellow and then simply a case of taking any one of the trees and just giving it a brush over the top just get a little bit more paint in there and what this does then is the yellow is picked up on the bits and pieces of sand and as I say it kind of brings the rest of the the base back together. This is just a very light brush over the top, very simple and then you just have a little bit of a just go and make sure you, you've got everything there and crack on with that that's the last one done so I've noticed on these as I've been going through that some of them have got ever so slightly different tones from the original base with the new base as well uh, but the yellow has managed to just wipe some of that out a little bit and in the next stages anyway we'll be covering these in static grass and foliage so it's that's another chance really to mask any of these previous mistakes that I may have made all oh, well, of my mistakes, but uh, just uh, the 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 difference in the in the colours. I mean, there's obviously some kind of reaction with the paints. So now, before we move on to the adding the foliage, I just want to protect the paint as it is. So what I'm going to do is use this Newton and Windsor professional matte varnish. This is an artist varnish. It's a spray varnish as well. Uh, this is by far the best varnish that I've ever used. Uh, it's never let me down, never frosted, but obviously, give it a good shake up. Take each of your trees and spray like that. And then again, once they're sprayed, Leave them to dry, uh, doesn't take very long the Windsor and Newton, put them on the radiator even quicker, uh, but that will uh, they'll be dry in a few hours. We can come back to those and then start adding the foliage and just finishing these off. So now the varnish has dried on these, so that's going to protect them quite a bit. But what I want to do now is just finish off these very last little bits, just add a few details of uh, a little bit more foliage just again to break up the colours on the base so they're not solid and also so that they'll merge into into my 
uh, <coughs> into my my board as well, which is a similar green to this. So what I've got here again is is my uh, go-to favourite, the old PVA. Squeeze a bit of that out, and for the foliage, I'm using. So there's tons of this stuff out there, but I'm using Woodland Scenics. Uh, this I think is summer colour. It's quite a nice mix, quite light greenish, uh, static grass. And ooh, you can, <laughs> oh dear, you can put this on with a static grass applicator, but I generally don't. You can just blow it off, things like this. And this is a very very simple way of working. Take some PVA and then just literally dab it in random spots on your base. Uh, this is the point where you, if you want to cover up any uh, cracks or differences in the, uh, the, the, the polyfiller that you put on then this is the time to do it. And take your scenic stuff and gently rub it around the Drop it on around the top like that. Knock off the excess. Give it a blow because that will then bring it back up. And there you have a little bit nicer base really. So again, just crack on with the rest of these. that uh, if you wanted to you could go further and add more clump foliage or uh, any other kind of scenic item that you want to put into these obviously you know you you did do the the colors depending on what your board is mine is uh, midsummer green board so this works for this uh, you can add anything else you want to I'm quite happy with these as they are now I may have some stuff in the future but right now they're good enough to play with and a lot better than they were before so this is how they looked before on the uh, on my gaming table so you can see these relatively small uh, <coughs> relatively small bases and now this is how they are now so quite a change actually you can see these ones are from another batch that I'm going to have to finish off at some point so Quite a difference in styles and just to give you that idea of how they look afterwards and you know compared to how the old the old ones uh, old trees as you can see fell down quite easy these don't so much I mean obviously they do fall over but you know they're a bit more uh, stable with that metal washer on the bottom so I hope this has helped uh, I've got another batch of about 20 trees to finish off, so I'm going to crack on with those, and thank you very much for watching.